Hi, Joe Bonnier from FastPitchPower.com. In this video, I want to address the efficacy or appropriateness of CrossFit style workouts for softball athletes. I want to do so in as unbiased a way as I can without injecting any emotional instincts into this content or eliciting any emotional reflexes from viewership. So it's really important that we disarm those instincts and have an unbiased conversation. We have to identify what we're looking for out of our athletes on the field, and we have to identify what the CrossFit experience is and what it can do for our athletes. On the field, we're looking to develop speed and power athletes with certain positions, primarily the pitcher and the catcher demonstrating greater degrees of softball-specific endurance, which really means the ability to uh, exhibit maximal power, maximal speed and agility over the course of the game, separated, separated by as much time as there is in between plays or in between innings. The cro CrossFit experience can be, I think, generally defined as a, um, a team-oriented, a group training experience, an intense training experience in which everyone who comes to the gym or the CrossFit box that day is going to participate or compete in this workout of the day. Um, same workout that, to my knowledge, is moderately scaled to athletes or members of different abilities. To my knowledge, there's no such thing as CrossFit personal training. Um, the, the content in this video is referring uh, to the, the traditional group training workout of the day model. Again, it's competitive, uh, it's a group training environment, okay? And the exercise catalog isn't too dissimilar from things I've recommended on Fast Pitch Power, including multi-joint or total body functional exercises, deadlift squats included, um, jumps, upper body exercise like push-ups, pull-ups, Olympic lifting, and gymnastics exercises. So it's not much different, but I think the environment and the, the workout of the day model and the competitive nature and their program that... Um, and their programming strategies is kind of what makes up that exclusive CrossFit experience. Uh, let's get let's continue on the positive side. Is that the goal of CrossFit is really to uh, substantially enhance a number of physical capacities to make it a well-rounded human become, or a, to develop a human into a well-rounded athlete. All right. So each workout of the day, which is going to be different every day, is going to address different things like strength, speed, stamina. Uh, balance, agility, flexibility, all kind of installed into, installed into those workouts. So, as I've mentioned, specifically speaking for softball athletes, it's really important to develop a well-rounded fit athlete. A fit athlete is a fresh athlete more often. And, and we're trying to keep our athletes fresh so they get the most out of softball-specific um, skill training and that they're fresh more often on game day and during tournaments. A fit athlete is an athlete who tolerates practices and workouts really well. A fit athlete will recover in between workouts and practices. A fit athlete will recover better from week to week, season to season, and so forth. An unfit team will be a tired team three or four weeks into the offseason, and tired athletes are athletes who can't get the most out of your skill training, okay, out of your strategy, or te uh, technical and tactical training. So we're trying to keep our athletes fit to keep them fresh. You can tell how important that is. Specific softball capacity training, speed and power, exclusively training for speed and power is an incomplete fitness approach. All right? So we need to keep our athletes fit as often as possible, especially as they're developing, building a, a big base foundation of fitness and, and maintaining that, at least maintaining that throughout the season, even for more advanced athletes. Okay, we're not going to get into the specifics of it, just going to admit that fitness plays a huge role for something as specific as skill specific or speed and power dominated like softball. But let's get to the reality. Okay? Things that group training cannot attend to. Can, obviously, cannot attend to um, optimally, cannot attend to individual differences, individual needs, uh, training age, um, injury history, and sport specific, sport specific needs. Okay? I, I work with primarily with softball pitchers, each of which, which have different bodies and have which have, each of which have different um, technical habits or technical uh, deficiencies that they need to be working on or their exercises need to reinforce the positives, positive mechanics or proper mechanics in during their workouts. Okay, so they, my goal is to choose exercises accordingly that take into, take into account all those individual needs and which maybe the, the motions or the cueing is drawn upon their, their reference inside the pitching circle. So things they're working on inside the pitching circle, they will see are positively reinforced right, using exercises. Not to say that those things can't be addressed in group training, they just can't be done so optimally on an individual basis. I don't think that's really negotiable. Not to say that group training can't be safe. Right, so let's look at intelligently programmed group training 
can be at least safe for a large group of athletes, 10, 15, 20 girls. But what happens when you, when you, make, um, when you make up a workout for uh, 15, 20 girls, all with different capacities to perform, is that each athlete gets something a little different out of that workout. Unfit or moderately fit athletes may get a lot out of a certain workout, while that certain workout may be too easy for your fit athletes so they don't get much out of it. At the same time, a very difficult or challenging workout may be exactly what your moderately fit or fit athletes need and can benefit from. Meanwhile, your unfit athletes are really struggling and they can't get the most out of it and they can't complete the workout as prescribed and, and they, get over, they get too fatigued, technique breaks down, and as soon as technique breaks down, injury risk goes up. Which leads me to my next point is in a competitive environment, which again, I think is really exclusive to the, the, the CrossFit experience. Okay, you're, you're racing against the clock. You're racing or you're competing against yourself to beat personal records. Pretty much, to my knowledge, on a daily basis with certain exercises, with most of their exercises or their workouts, which combine exercises. That stress of competition takes a toll on an athlete. For an average Joe like me that doesn't have tournaments or games on the weekend, I like, going, I like competing against myself. I like competing against the clock because I don't have anything to recover or prepare for come the weekend. The weekend is my time to de-stress and recover to get back after it in my, during my workouts during the week. So for average Joes, non-athletes, it's a great environment. For athletes, you need to save and store that competitive One juice. thing that also cannot needs to be addressed is that when a competitive environment is introduced at any time, the athlete mentality is to get something done at all costs. And the expense in during a workout is technique. All right? Technique will suffer when workouts become competitive. And you can, no matter how many coaches you put with your athletes, if your athletes, if the coach athlete ratio is one to one, if you have 20 coaches to 20 athletes, okay, if you're going to push your athletes to the limit and you're going to expect them to compete in the gym, they'll push themselves beyond technical failure. And that is flat out unacceptable. Okay, that's, um, that's profe professional negligence. And that's just not a safe environment or not a safe experience for any athlete whose goal, whose primary goal, is to perform optimally for softball. All right, so you have a lot of things to weigh. Okay, if you are a coach, uh, an assistant coach, who has become the default kind of strength and conditioning coach for your team, and you, you are a former athlete, and you do go to CrossFit yourself, that's fantastic. And you want to take out some of the beneficial elements of CrossFit, because there are. The exercise catalog, the team environment, the workouts are hard. We want our girls to learn how to work hard. That, that's a huge goal of every coach. We want, we want athletes who are going to know how to push themselves. Understand that there has to be a balance. Okay? So separate the competitions, dissect them away, okay? or, or as far away from competitive softball-specific competition. Do them in the off-season. Make sure that exercises are safe. Make sure that they, they best address individual needs. If a girl is really struggling, make sure you have an alternative for her. Don't, don't um, cast her out or exclude her from a workout. When you're developing a workout for your team, make sure there all are, there are, are alternatives for your athletes. Um, make sure you address uh, indiv individuals' injury history and training experience. Okay, so uh, if somebody has a nagging or you know a, a history of shoulder injuries, okay, honestly, maybe burpees aren't your go-to conditioning exercise. I don't want to see any athlete hitting the floor to fatigue. Okay, when the the health of their shoulders are is at a premium. All right, that's what their that's what their competitive success is going to be determined by, or at least you know um, considerably determined by, is staying healthy, especially in the shoulders. Don't do anything that, that compromises that. So a lot of this is common sense. I didn't mean to portray CrossFit as good or bad, just appropriate or less appropriate. I really hope that the softball community or non-CrossFit community sees the good in CrossFit. I really hope that the CrossFit community sees that Maybe CrossFit as it's been performed or created may not be exactly appropriate at all times for a softball athlete or any athlete, but that certain elements are beneficial because they certainly are. And that some, at some time, the two fields or the, or the two sides can come together to take what's beneficial and to utilize what's beneficial with your athletes. Um, 
If you have questions or comments, if I haven't already mentioned, if you're an authority in CrossFit or a CrossFit, CrossFit trainer, and I've misrepresented your community in any way, make sure you let me know. Um, contribute a comment underneath this video on fastpitchpower.com. You can forward me any information that you'd like directly to joe at fastpitchpower.com. Um, I hope this was unbiased. I hope this was helpful. I hope this portrayed both sides, the needs of a softball athlete and the CrossFit experience um, accurately. Okay, again, without the emotional instincts or reflexes uh, that are all too common nowadays online. Thanks for following Fast Pitch Power. Talk to you next week.